Hello everybody. Today we are starting a new mini-series, I guess you call it, on map strategies. Now that we've looked at all the professions and their potential, let's figure out how to mold a team build for each map. We will look at the map overview, map strategies, and possible team comps for each strategy. Starting in the Beta Weekend 3 tournament order, this video will be on Legacy of the Faux Fire. I have made diagrams for you looking at the perspective of the blue team. First thing to discuss before we even get on the battlefield is that Guild Wars 2 is not a min-maxing game. There is no best possible way to win the game, even at such an early stage. The best way to win is to head in with your first strategy and see if it succeeds. If it does, great. That means it's time to keep your eyes open for when your opponent changes their own strategy to counter yours. Strategies will change constantly in one game. The victor will be who can adapt faster and who is able to win team fights more at the same time. Even though you can earn points at a more rapid rate if you kill a lot of people, it is very possible to not get any kills even as a huge zerg formation if the other team is skilled enough to not get caught and still have all the points captured around you. So you must be able to keep points captured. You also gain more points for defending, so even if you only have one point, killing their entire team while defending a point is worth killing their entire team three times. The most ideal state of map control for Legacy of the Faux Fire is having two points captured, two people defending each point, and one person knocking down their base doors. But I'll discuss why later on. Okay, when you start your match, you need to decide on an opening strategy. For me, I can only decide on two big strategies at this point since we do not have a meta set up yet. There is the receptive strategy and the offensive strategy. You might also consider the receptive strategy as more of a defensive strategy, but it can turn the other way just as quickly. With the receptive strategy, it has a bit more defense built into it so that you can have enough time to move people around on the map to help other teammates out so points are not lost and there are less deaths. This strategy requires two point defenders in your team composition, two DPS and a support. Point defender number one is more of a hold the point as long as possible role, while the second point defender will usually have teammates with him so he might have more damage or team healing abilities. If you want to, use a thief or an elementalist, or just anyone fast, for one of your DPS roles, or switch them out with a support role. We'll call him the runner. That way, if you see the other team begin to zerg a point, the runner can get to the undefended point and capture it with ease. While the other team would get more points if they were able to kill the people defending the point and capturing the point itself, you get that many points for defending your point from one person. So capturing the other point instead of trying to win a 3 or 4v5 is much safer and smarter. Since there are only two DPS builds, it is best to have one flat damage spec and have the other be a condition and crowd control spec. The paths your team should take when the battle begins is one point defender to the closest point, red team takes quarry and blue team takes waterfall, while the rest of the team heads for Sanctum. As soon as you see the enemy team, call out the number of people they send to Sanctum. This will change which strategy you take after the fight mid. If there are four meeting you at Sanctum, there's not much you can do except fight your best. It is a common strategy and you will need to be ready. But with this team composition, your second point defender will help knock back everyone to try and capture the point and heal everyone during the fight. If you win the fight, keep the second point defender and condition damage crowd controller character on Sanctum while your DPS and support or runner, whichever they are, try to capture the remaining point quickly before the enemy team can get back into battle. Keep in mind that you are in the lead and capturing all three points are not necessary. You get a lot more points for successfully defending your nodes. God, I need to just start using the word nodes more because the word points is getting confusing. While this is going on, make sure the first point guardian and the people at Sanctum are calling out where the enemy team is going. The downside to this map is that once you capture two nodes, you have almost complete vision of their base, so it is much easier to develop a strategy when you are winning than when you are behind. Also the nodes are very close together, so having your team spread out like this is not a terrible problem. Since this is a defensive team composition, the point guardians can hold out easily until reinforcements arrive 
three to five seconds later. And that's really all there is to it. If you can hold at least two points, as long as you're winning the even team fights, you were able to rack up a lot of defense points, which would be better than stretching out your team too far and being overrun. Now, what if you lose that first team fight in Sanctum? Use your death to your advantage and see where the enemy team is going next. If the fight was even enough, they may only have two people alive, so they will just protect Sanctum until they can regroup. In that case, you have the same amount of time to regroup with your team and try to get the point guardian from the node you first captured to make it a 5v4 on Sanctum to see if the fight goes any better. If the fight mid did not go as well, use your death screen to see where the enemy team is going. If they try to capture the third node, move your entire team to their side node to fight their point defender and capture the node easily. From there you have two options. Head mid and by the time your first point defender respawns, unless he was not killed while the other team was capturing his point, he can meet up with you for a 5v4 fight for Sanctum. Or, if you actually are scared of how devastating their team is, you can try to distract them with all four of you at your newly captured node and your fifth respawning. Send your runner to the enemy base to start knocking on their wall. The enemy team cannot see you, so they do not know if you're going all in for a base rush or not. They will have to send at least two people to check it out. Now, you can meet up with your fifth teammate at Sanctum for a 4v3 battle to see how that goes. Sadly, this map is very small, so capping points and avoiding team fights is very difficult. So if you cannot win when you tip the odds in your favor, it's just not going to be possible for you to win. Possible team compositions are Double Guardian, Warrior, Elementalist for support, and Thief as a DPS runner. Another one is Guardian, two warriors, one being the second point defender, necromancer, and elementalist as a support slash runner. The other one I thought of was guardian and warrior being your point defenders, engineer, ranger being condition damage, and elementalist being support runner. The list really goes on and on, and you can change roles before each match in case the enemy's team does not match up well against your composition. Now let's look at the offensive strategy. This requires confidence in your team fighting ability and communication. The team comp is very similar to the receptive strategy, except they switch out the second node defender for another high DPS. Teams that use this strategy are focused on winning the first fight for Sanctum and not having any of their teammates die. During team fights, call out targets to focus burst fire to quickly drop enemies one at a time while your support and condition damage characters provide backup and protection from the rest of the team quickly putting the fight in your favor. Start out with your node defender going for the nearest side node and the rest of your team going for Sanctum. If the enemy sends forward mid as well, have your node defender join you at Sanctum because the better the team fight goes, the faster you can dominate the map. Once you capture Sanctum, keep your node defender there to watch the enemy base for where the enemy team is headed while the rest of your team rushes to the last node to capture it before the enemy team returns. If they head to take your undefended point, everyone regroup at Sanctum and destroy their team. There is also the chance that they will split up with three going to Sanctum and one going to your undefended node. If that is the case, the node defender will repel the enemy team at Sanctum until the rest of your team joins him. And then, one of your DPS will continue moving towards the lone wolf that thinks your team is going to let him capture your node without retaliation. That's four defensive kills for an offensive team build. Now that you have all the nodes, pick two to defend. Node defender on one, and the rest of the team on another, because trying to defend three is just stupid. If you're too split up and giving up too many points for something you know you couldn't win, just keep a visual on enemy base and react properly to where the majority of the team are heading. I recommend defending their closest side node and sanctum for maximum visual on their base. What happens if we lose any of these battles? This strategy requires a good team fighting group, so you should go into this knowing you are good enough. But there is always the possibility of mistakes being made and losing a fight that could cost you map control. When that happens, look for their weak point. Whichever node is the least guarded, but still guarded by a few people. Take your entire team there and capture it. As long as you have one node, you are still in the game. From there, Use your numbers advantage, depending on how many you killed to capture that node, to rush your entire team to the next node to dominate their team. 
if they were able to defend against a 5v3 or 5v4, you shouldn't be using the strategy in the first place. Possible team compositions I found were no defending guardian, warrior, condition ranger, elementalist, and support mesmer. Another one I found was double warrior, one being a no defender, condition damage engineer, ranger, and support mesmer. Another one you could try would be no defending guardian, double warrior, condition damage necromancer, and support elementalists. The possibilities here are just endless, just different roles to fill and no need for a runner. Well, I think that about covers what I have to say about strategy for Legacy of the Faux Fire. This map was kind of a disappointment to a lot of people, especially the Guild Wars 1 players. This first attempt at recapturing the Guild vs Guild mode from Guild Wars 1 failed because the risk reward factors for going after the enemy's team's lord was terrible. The mobs were difficult to take on all at once, and trying to take them all plus the enemy team that came back to stop you was extremely annoying. Because of the lord's helpers, the enemy team only had to send three of their teammates to make it the equivalent of a 6 or 7v5, while the other two capture all the nodes and rack up all the points. And with the map as small as it is, they can defeat you, capture all the nodes, and set up defenses before you even respawn. Even though 100 points sounds enticing, it is definitely not worth it in tournaments. Hopefully ArenaNet will figure out a way to make it work, but I'm not sure if it'll be good enough for 5v5s. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you learned a lot about this map and will enjoy the ideas I have come up with for the other maps, which are a bit more detailed because their secondary objectives aren't a joke. If you like this video, please feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons below for updates on future videos. Also, send me any questions or opinions you have about SPVP in general. I would like to get a list of them so I may start Q&A videos. Thank you all again and I'll see you next time.